Flight service stations are one of the most valuable but underutilized assets that a pilot has at his disposal. These are facilities that can provide a lot of information and other services to keep us safe when we fly. In this video, I'm going to explain how to call and get a weather briefing, how to file a flight plan, and how to get an in-flight weather briefing. Before you make a cross-country flight, it's always a good idea to get a weather briefing before you go. Obviously, you should look at the weather yourself, but getting a good weather briefing can really help you make good decisions about the weather. And most importantly, the flight service stations can help you avoid thunderstorms. To get a weather briefing from an FSS, there are a few different phone numbers you can call, but most pilots use 1-800-WEATHER-BRIEF. Before we call, I want to show you a trick that's going to make your life a lot easier. The first few times you call the flight service station, I highly recommend filling out one of these domestic flight plans before you do. This is because even if you're only getting a weather briefing, this is all the information they need from you before they can give you that briefing. In addition to that, if you want to file a flight plan when you call, that information is right in front of you as well. Now this form is available on the FAA's website, and all you have to do is Google FAA Domestic Flight Plan, and it's literally one of the first things to pop up. Okay, so when you call for a weather briefing, the first thing you need to do is tell them you're a pilot. For some reason, other people call to get weather briefings as well, so the briefing they get is going to be a little different and it may not have the information you need. Next, make sure they know that this will be a VFR flight, and that lets them know that you're going to be concerned about avoiding clouds and areas of bad visibility. Now, in order to give you a weather briefing, they either need your aircraft ID number or your name. They keep track of who gets weather briefings, so if you crash and didn't get a weather briefing before the flight, they can throw the book at you. I'm just kidding, I don't know why they keep track of them, but it's definitely something to think about. They also need to know your departure airport, route of flight, and your destination. Okay, so when you call and ask for a weather briefing, there are three types of briefings you can ask for. An outlook briefing, an abbreviated briefing, and a standard briefing. If you're not going to be flying in the next six hours, an outlook briefing is a good briefing to get. The flight service station will give you more of a general overview of the weather you can expect six or more hours from the time you call. They're not going to be able to give you a ton of detail if you ask for one of these, because the weather can change quite a bit in six hours. But this is a really good briefing to start out with. Now if you've already checked the weather before you go fly, you may just want an abbreviated briefing. I know that you're basically a weather expert now since you've watched all my videos on weather. So this is a good option if you've already checked things out for yourself and you just need a little bit more information. The last thing you can ask for is the standard weather briefing. If you ask for this, expect to get all the gory details of the weather along your whole route of flight. This is a good choice if you didn't have time to check the weather before your flight. Okay, so after you've been briefed on the weather, they're probably going to ask you if you want to file a flight plan. And if you do, now's the time to do it. It is possible to file a flight plan on the radio, but it's better to do it over the phone so you're not clogging up the radios. We will be using the radios to open up the flight plan, and I'll explain how to do that in just a second. But you really should be filing over the phone or online instead of the radios. With that in mind, we already have all the information we need to file right in front of us because we filled out this form. Let's look at the rest of these things really quick. Now just like the weather briefing, they need to know the type of aircraft you're flying. But they also need to know the equipment you have on board. In this example, I put a slant golf because my aircraft has a GPS. But here are some other common codes for training aircraft out there. But you can find a complete list on the FAA's website if you can't find the one you need. Next, we have our true airspeed. The best thing to use for this are your POH cruise tables or a flight computer. Next, we have our departure location, our departure time in Zulu, our cruising altitude, and our route of flight. As you can see, I'm flying direct. Next is our destination, then our estimated time en route. If you're flying across country, you're going to want to have your nav log done before you give them this. And that's because you want to be as accurate as possible with this, because if you're going to be more than 30 minutes late, they're going to be sending a search party out after you. That's one of the advantages to filing a VFR flight plan. The flight service station is responsible for starting the search and rescue efforts if something were to happen to you in flight. Next, we have the amount of fuel we have on board. In order to get this number, you need to know how many gallons of fuel you have and divide that by how many gallons of fuel per hour your plane burns. I recommend being as conservative on this number as possible. Once again, they need your name and phone number in case they need to get in touch with you. They also need to know how many souls are going to be on board the aircraft. If you crash and you don't put this and your buddy gets thrown from the aircraft, they may stop the search and rescue operations when they find the plane and you, and if you're unconscious, you won't be able to tell them that someone else was with you. Next, they need to know the color of your aircraft. 
Now down here, I don't actually think this is something they use. This is just a reminder for you to close your flight plan when you reach your destination. And I'll explain how to do that in just a minute. But you need to close that as soon as you arrive. And if you don't, they're going to try calling you on this number. And if you don't answer, your search and rescue operations will begin. Alright, you got your weather briefing, you filed your flight plan, you took off, and now you've started that cross country. Let's call the FSS and open up that flight plan. And this just lets them know that we're on our way and what time we started. The first step in doing that is finding the right frequency to talk on. To do that, first find the closest VOR facility on your route of flight. Now usually the FSS frequency is on the top of the VOR information box, and the name of that particular FSS is attached to the bottom of the box in these brackets. In this example, you can see that the closest FSS frequency to me is actually above this Fayetteville Springdale Rogers RCO box, and below that is the name of the flight service station. In this example, their name is Jonesboro Radio. Let's give them a call. Jonesboro Radio, Skyhawk 3148 X-Ray, transmitting and receiving on 122.55. Now there's actually a really important reason why we make the radio call this way. As you can see down here, Jonesboro Radio is actually listening to multiple frequencies. They need to know what frequency you're on. And by telling them that frequency, that'll allow them to respond to you. But take a look at this VOR DME down in Hot Springs. This frequency has a little R after it. If you see this on top of the box, this means that the flight service station can only receive radio calls on this frequency. They can't respond to it, and that's probably because they're out of range. Anyway, that doesn't matter. What does matter is that you have to tune in the VOR frequency on your NavAid radios and turn on the sound in order to hear their response. In this example, the radio call would sound like this. Jonesboro Radio, Skyhawk 3148 X-Ray, transmitting on 122.1 and receiving on the Hot Springs VOR. And that just lets them know that we're talking on 122.1 and we're able to listen through the VOR. Remember, the R indicates that the FSS is receiving on this frequency, not you. Now on occasion, you may see two frequencies on top, but only one of them has an R like this one up at Walnut Ridge. They do that because if you're below 5,000 feet, you're probably not going to have a good enough signal to have two-way comms on this frequency. You'll probably need to revert to the split radio procedures on 122.1 and the Walnut Ridge Vortac. Now you probably notice this really big frequency, 255.4. You're not going to be able to tune that one in with your radios because this is a military UHF frequency. I just don't want you to be fiddling with your radios trying to get that frequency to go in. Your radios won't go that high. All right, let's go back to opening up that flight plan. Jonesboro Radio, Skyhawk 3148 X-Ray, transmitting and receiving on 122.55. Skyhawk 3148 X-Ray, this is Jonesboro Radio. We read you 5x5. Five five. What can we do for you today? Yes, sir. I have a flight plan in the system for Skyhawk 3148 X-Ray with a departure of 0800 Zulu. Our actual takeoff time was 0814 Zulu. No other changes to the flight. I would like to go ahead and open up that flight plan. Roger that, 48 X-Ray. I've got your flight plan right here. I'll get that opened up for you. Do you need an in-flight weather briefing? If you do, now's a great time for that. For now, I think we're good, though. No, thank you, sir. I think we have a pretty good picture of the weather. Roger that, 48 X-Ray. You have a good flight. Will do. Thank you so much for your help. And that's how easy it is to open up a flight plan. Get that fancy radio call out of the way so they know what frequency to talk to you on. Then just speak plain English to these guys. They're super awesome and really helpful. So as we get closer to our destination, I'm noticing a lot more clouds in front of me than what was forecasted. Now what? I've actually had this exact same situation happen to me between these same locations. So this is a realistic scenario where you might want to call and get a weather briefing. So let's find the right frequency and call these guys up. These guys are itching to help pilots like us out anyways. Hmm, this service station over here at Fort Smith is pretty close. Let's give them a call. Jonesboro Radio, Skyhawk 3148 X-Ray, transmitting and receiving on 122.2. Skyhawk 3148 X-Ray, Jonesboro Radio, you're coming in loud and clear. How can I help you today? Yes, I'm on a VFR cross-country flight from Benita Municipal Airport, Hotel 04 to North Little Rock, Kilo Oscar Romeo Kilo, and I need an in-flight weather briefing. When you call these guys, be specific with the information you need. They can help you with a lot of different situations. I'm flying VFR and I'm having an issue with the clouds, so I want to be as specific as possible. We are 34 miles to the northeast of the Fort Smith Vortac, and we're seeing a lot more clouds in front of us than what was forecasted. We're just needing to know if it looks like these clouds are going to clear up as we get closer to North Little Rock. We would like to be able to land under visual flight rules. 
Copy that for you at X-ray. I'll take a look at that for you. It looks like along your route of flight, things are about the same as what you're seeing there, but it looks like things will start opening up for you as you get on the other side of the Russellville Airport. Conway Regional is calling scattered at 3,500 with visibility at five statute miles. North Little Rock is calling few at 4,000 with unlimited visibility. Hey man, thank you so much. I was starting to get a little nervous about all these clouds. I'm not sure where they all came from. No problem for it, X-Ray. And by the way, we're not seeing any reported thunderstorms on your route of flight, and no pirates in that area that conflict with this report. Enjoy the rest of your flight, and let us know if we can help you in any other way. Thanks, Jonesboro. So as I mentioned earlier, these guys can help in a lot of different ways. They specialize with weather, but they can help you if you get lost, if you can't get a hold of ATC, and all kinds of other stuff. Okay, so last but not least, we need to close out our flight plan. Now you probably already noticed this, but this airport is tucked into some tricky airspace, so the easiest thing in this case may be to call 1-800-WEATHER-BRIEF and close the flight plan that way. But you're flying with me today, so we're going to do things the hard way and close it over the radio. Looks like the closest FSS is once again Jonesboro Radio on 122.55. Jonesboro Radio, Jonesboro Radio, Skyhawk 3148 X-Ray transmitting and receiving on 122.55. Skyhawk 3148 X-Ray, Jonesboro Radio, go ahead. Yes, sir. I'm five miles to the west of North Little Rock with the field in sight. I'd like to go ahead and close my flight plan. Skyhawk 3148 X-Ray, Roger, I'll get that closed out for you. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. See ya. And once again, do not forget to do this. 30 minutes after you land, you will be getting a phone call, and if you don't answer, that search will begin for your crash site. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, go ahead and let your finger land on that like button. And once you do that, watch this quick training video to keep you on track for that private pilot's license. See ya!